What's happening, y'all? It's your boy, Halfway 100, world's best reaction channel. Today, we just get it. I'm a singer turned rapper, nigga. Yeah, with me. Real life, I be trapping, nigga. Before I lose my life, I rap a nigga. Outlining yeah. in chalk, yellow tape on the gas. Yeah, yeah, you niggas ain't really bad. All my niggas no limit, yeah, we bout to die. I'ma lay a nigga down if a nigga try me. Bang bang, half a gang, y'all know this, man. Another day, another motherfucking reaction. Over here, half a land. I'm interested. I want to see the. I know, I know, I know y'all gonna like this too. That's so what I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start reacting. I told y'all we're gonna be reacting to a lot more stuff. Um, but uh, I'm interested in these five most impressive heights of all time. I know y'all, I know, I know y'all want to see this too. Alrighty, I know y'all want to see this. I'm like, man, what, what, what can I react to that people going with the, the, the gang? I want to see. What else? Heist. Five most impressive heist of all time. Gang shit. Straight mob shit, hopefully. Over here in the States, man, we really don't get too many heists and all that shit, man. I know y'all over there. I know y'all famous for that kind of shit. Like, y'all get, like, we make the movies about y'all over there. So. I know y'all on that shit. So, right now, everybody, go ahead and get their shit together. Go ahead and fire it on up. And, uh... Five greatest heists of all time. Even if we don't condone them, most people are generally fascinated with heists. Movies like Ocean's Eleven and The Sting glamorize these calculated criminal feats, and audiences around the world enjoy watching fictional characters escaping with huge piles of cash and jewelry. But sometimes, these elaborate... You know why everybody is intrigued by them? Because everybody like, man, I wish I had the balls to do that and get away with it. But no, they weren't. Ain't nobody willing to really take that chance not, not over here get your ass scorched names occur outside of the world of fiction today we're looking at the five greatest heists of all time antwerp diamond heist the antwerp diamond district is one of the most heavily secured places in the world with billions of dollars of diamonds changing hands there every year and it was there in 2003 that one gang of thieves pulled off one of the largest diamond heists in history now, even though most of the gang, known as the School of Turin, has since been arrested, the diamonds have never been retrieved. The robbery was led by Leonardo Notar Bartulo, a small-time diamond dealer, tenant of the Diamond Center, and a thief responsible for many minor jewel robberies. Although police believe he was the robbery's man. Man, listen, that's what I just said. I'm trying to figure out where this shit is at. I don't know what, where, what country this shit is in. But all the motherfuckers like some exotic names to me. Shit. I know they know we're over here. Mastermind, he claimed that he was contacted by an unidentified diamond dealer who recruited him for the crime. Notar Bartolo said he was paid to take pictures of the vault's complex security system. From those pictures, the dealer constructed a full-sized replica of the vault. Notar Bartolo states that the dealer set him up with a small gang of Italian jewel thieves, each with specific skills for the robbery. The police are not convinced of the truth of this anonymous diamond dealer. However, no proof has been found to support this claim. The thieves got through the 10 layers of security, previously thought to be impenetrable. They bypassed cameras, the combo dial, the keyed lock, magnetic sensors, the locked steel gate, light sensors, heat and motion sensors, and keypad disarming sensors. They used aluminum to trick the magnetic field and stripped plastic off the wires of the sensor circuits. Then they loaded up bags of diamonds and other jewels. It took two hours to get it all out of the building. But thanks to one gang member, things eventually fell apart. That man was Pedro Tavano, known as... It's always one motherfucker. It's, all, it's always one. It's always one. Go spend the money. Go splurge. Act like a nigga who I never had shit. Well, you hit licks, you can't act like a nigga who ain't never had shit. You gotta go ahead and sit back, relax. It's 
players maybe after the statute of limitation is up or just live off of it for years. You know what I'm saying? Don't never splurge. Depends on what type of person you is. Just depends. <laughs> and one of Notar Bartolo's lifelong friends. Speedy couldn't handle the pressure. After unloading the loot into this car, he had to pull over because he was having a panic attack. Remarkably, not a single alarm went off. As security guards arrived on Monday morning, they realized that the thick steel door to the vault was open and 100 of the 189 safe deposit boxes had been raided, with some of the loot still on the floor. The world's only specialized diamond police, Patrick Pays and Agim de Breiker, phoned the vault's alarm company. What is the status of the alarm, they asked. Fully functional, came the reply. However, authorities eventually found Notar Bartolo by watching security footage. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison. That's it. 10 years in prison? That ain't shit for a heist like that to get away with it, nigga. 10 years? Do 10 years from on my hands. Man. Standing on my hands with, with money like that waiting on me when I come home. Drop a drop a stone off here or there. Get paid, you know what I'm saying? Live off about ten thousand uh, for ten years. Thousand dollars a year. You know. Just keep it real light. Just keep it real. I'm talking about just keep it real light in there. I'm talking about keep it real light in there. Come home. Slap niggas over the face with shit. What? You can't be charged again, nigga. Double jeopardy, nigga. What the fuck? Brazilian bank robbers. In 2017, Brazil's police arrested 16 men tunneling towards a vault containing 1 billion rias, or $318 million, and who were on the verge of pulling off the largest ever bank robbery in the country's history. Authorities swooped just before the alleged gang was able to use its impressively equipped tunnel to enter the safe at a Banco do Brasil branch. Damn, did y'all see that bank? I mean, did y'all see that motherfucking tunnel? Like a fucking vehicle could get through that motherfucker. Damn. That motherfucker look like a sewer. In the country's financial capital, it would have been the world's biggest heist, said police chief Fabio Pinero Lopez on Globo TV. Police said work on the tunnel began four months ago, starting from a house several blocks from the bank. It had sophisticated supports, fans, and lights. The police believe Alcio Cio Gomez Noriega was the ringleader of the operation. He is a 35-year-old man implicated in an attempted robbery of a security van in Paraguay. The court ruled the group be held in pretrial detention. Though it's hard to believe, the group dug the tunnel by hand. They loaded the soil into sacks and carried it outside through an underground stormwater drain. To enter the tunnel, gang members descended a two-meter ladder from one of the roofs. To enter the tunnel, gang members? God damn. Can you call them something else? Gang members? Fuck. Gang members? in the rented house. The tunnel was about 1.5 meters high and was reinforced with iron beams and wood and even wired with lights. The walls were lined with plastic garbage bags to reduce the dust. The tunnel was reportedly filled with food, water, special clothing, and digging tools. Police were probing whether the gang had the assistance of an engineer when building the tunnel because the construction was so impressive. The tunnel renewed memories of a tunnel robbery 12 years ago when thieves made off with about $70 million U.S. dollars for the previous hot. <laughs> they got the same engineer on the job, on the motherfucking job. Diggers worked in shifts from 8 p.m. until 4 a.m., taking a break on weekends. The three gang members involved in that attempt were involved in two separate prison escapes using tunnels equipped with ventilation and lighting. $500 million cyber heist. Starting in 2009, cyber... It's a whole bunch of money. Numbers. They're just moving them numbers. Whew. 
And it's hard to, I'm telling you, boy, right now, I don't know too much about it, but I know one thing. It's some money in that shit, and it's like people, but shit, there's some time in that shit too, though. I know that, well, I don't know, but I know of this one dude that just got caught from like like Nigeria or some shit. They call him like Puggy or some shit. <laughs> yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Motherfucker, woof. Let's see if this is what they're talking about, the Nigerian dude. Criminals from Eastern Europe infiltrated at at least 100 banks in 30 countries, raking in as much as $1 billion in fraudulent transfers and hijacked ATM machines over a two-year period. They did so with a mysterious Trojan called SpyEye. The attacker struck at Russian banks first, as well as those in Germany, China, and the United States. They got away with it initially, but soon authorities tracked them down and they were brought to justice. Alexander Androvich Panin, the inventor of SpyEye, who went by alias Rybodemon and Harder Man Online, pleaded guilty to a court of conspiracy to commit bank and wire fraud in January 2014 after reaching a deal with prosecutors. Prosecutor Stephen Grimberg said, Sound like he told on somebody reaching a deal. Spy-Eye, a preeminent piece of malware developed from 2010 to 2012, was used to infect more than 50 million computers, causing nearly $1 billion in damage to individuals and financial institutions around the world. A second man, Hamza Bendelaj, a 27-year-old Algerian known online as BX1, was sentenced to 15 years. Prosecutors said he sold versions of SpyEye online and used the malware to steal financial information. SpyEye was a type of Trojan virus that secretly implanted itself on victims' computers to steal sensitive information, including bank account credentials, credit card information, passwords, and PINs. But once it took over a computer, it allowed hackers to trick victims into surrendering personal information including data grabbing and fake bank account pages. The information was relayed to a command and control center to be used to access victim accounts. Pat I think I just had one of them out. You know what I did? I probably got another motherfucking computer or another fucking insight. Another hard drive. I'm about to get the fuck up out of here. <laughs> and not around this motherfucker conspired with others to advertise SpyEye in online cybercrime forums and sold versions of the software at prices ranging from $500 to $10,000. FBI Special Agent Mark Ray testified. Pannon was the architect of a pernicious malware known as SpyEye that infected computers worldwide. He commercialized the wholesale theft of financial and personal information. And now he's being held to account for his actions, U.S. Attorney Sally Yates stressed in a news release. Now, many police agencies don't have the skills to effectively track down and investigate cybercrime. Tracking down cyber criminals requires a very different skill set from traditional policing, which limits the ability of law enforcement to go after cyber criminals. It also takes resources and trained personnel, which are, in many cases, in very short supply, says Martin Rosler, Director of Threat Research at Trend Micro. France's heist of the century. French gangster Jacques Cassandre was in court a French gangster. 2018 for a crime committed over 40 years ago. Police noticed the fact the Marseillais Mafoso was the likely mastermind of the heist of the century after he was discovered to be the anonymous author of a book about the crime. On July 16, 1976, a group of criminals robbed a branch of Society General, France's third largest bank, in the southern city of Nice. Now, using the tunnels underneath the city, the gang was able to partially destroy the floor beneath the bank's basement vault and gain access to the banknotes, jewelry, gold bars, and safety deposit boxes located within. According to the Society General's own account of the incident, the brazen criminals spent the weekend taking their time going through the vault's contents, even taking the time and luxury to picnic using the depositor's silverware. He used a pen name, but investigators quickly concluded that the writer was Jacques Cassandre, a key mafia figure in Marseille, where he is now standing trial. He had assumed he was safe because the crime was too old to be prosecuted. But Cassandra is being charged with laundering the millions from the heist, a crime from which France has no statute of limitations. 
Police found the manuscript on Cassandra's computer, and his children later confessed that their father had often bragged about the robbery. He eventually admitted to orchestrating the intrinsically planned job that involved at least six people and 30 tanks of acetylene to fuel the welding torches used to cut into safes and safety deposit boxes. An inquiry found he had also bought furs worth tens of thousands of euros and had once provided the financial guarantee with seven bars of gold. He has always said it was a novel, and I don't think a court can convict someone on the basis of a novel, a lawyer from Cassandra Frederick Monterey said Monday. But Cassandra and his family members are facing a series of questions on his business dealings, with prosecutors also alleging social security fraud and a real estate scam in Corsica. It's not his first time in court, having been arrested in the early 1970s when police broke up the French connection heroin trade centered in Marcel. One million dollar pharmacy robber. Back in 2000. Dan, I think they, nigga, they had a, a million, a million dollars in pharmaceuticals. That's a lick, lick. The owner of a super value pharmacy in Fort Worth, Texas, rang in the new year with a trashed business missing $1 million worth of pharmaceuticals. The general manager, Jane Laubaum, said the pharmacy at 720 North Industrial Boulevard was broken into in the early hours of December 31st. The burglars took highly marketable drugs with a street value of up to $1 million, she said. Surveillance footage shows men clad in black crawling and trying to break into a safe. Spilled pill bottles and cough syrup can be seen in the footage and what appears to be a safe with the side cut out. An employee named Richard Irby said the robber tied him and three employees up with zip ties. He said he didn't want to hurt anybody. Now, we sort of took him at his word, but he's still waving a gun. The scary part, I never looked down the barrel of a gun before. The robber filled a bag with narcotics and left through the back door. Irby knows through other pharmacists the robberies are escalating. Yellow hydrocodone, Soma, and Xanax are the big three that most of them are after, Irby said. Ir yeah, I know over here, they, that's what they be hitting licks on over here is for them pills and syrup and shit. But that shit is crazy. He wonders how long it will be before one of those crooks decides the drugs are worth pulling the trigger. The video ended up becoming extremely popular with over 4 million views and counting. Sheesh. Look at them some heists. That seemed like more than five. That seemed like more than five heists, though. That seemed like more than like. That seemed like more than five heists. I don't know this, this your boy FA 100 man. We here on motherfucking week. I'm a singer turn rapping, yeah, nigga. In real life, I be trapping, oh, nigga. Yeah. Before I lose my life, I rap a nigga. Outline yeah. and chalk, yellow tape on the case. Yeah, yeah, you niggas ain't really bad. All my niggas no limit, yeah, we bout to die. I'ma lay a nigga down if a nigga try me. I'm